So there's a philosophy I follow by, which is called Stoicism, which is can be summarized very simply by the art of controlling what you can control and accepting uncontrollable stuff. For example, here, since when Corona, like COVID-19 situations, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think a really good example of Stoicism will be controlling my action, my mind, and what I can do in a day, and accepting the fact that there's an uncontrollable event happening outside, which is a virus trying to mess up everything in my life. And if I can really understand that concept of not focusing on something I can control, which is a virus outside of the world, and only focusing on what I can do now, in the moment, and just doing that thing, I think that's one very big component of self-discipline. If you can do that effectively, you're going to reduce your stress level, increase your energy level, and all those things. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Leaders Podcast. You're here because you believe that you too have been called to build and live an impactful life. Right, this episode's guest is known as by far the most productive student at the African Leadership Academy. Over the past year, this young individual was the CEO of the Bezos Scholars Foundation, which I believe is a student enterprise on the ANA campus. Additionally, he was also the Chief Operations Officer of the African Leadership Consulting Group, which is a student management consulting group on the African continent. Recently, he enrolled at a top institution in the United States by the name of Lehigh University, where for the next four years, he'll be studying a degree in Integrated Engineering and Business Administration. Takshil, thank you so much for joining us here at the Leaders Podcast. Yeah, thank you very much, and I'm very glad to be here and do that interview with you. Thank you so much, Taki. Now, I think this is by far one of the questions a lot of people have probably asked you. Walk me through how, at a very young age, you've managed to develop such a relationship with time, and most importantly, how you've managed to become as productive as you are. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's a question I get asked very, very often. And one thing, like, one straight answer I can give is habit building. Like one big aspect of me being able to manage time so well is first of all, habit building. Like how do you actually build long lasting and consistent habits? And that I think comes with a lot of self-discipline. Like self-discipline itself is kind of a component of habit building. Once you master that part, it's basically just a child play. Like for you to wake up at specific time, for you to eat specific things or to do specific things every single day for the next 17 hour in the whole day basically so yeah i really think that habit building mm -hmm. is one of the key things that allowed me to become so like build that relationship with time as you mentioned mm -hmm. and kind of to give some background where i like how i built everything like even before coming here to the african leadership academy i knew all the concepts regarding time management but then back home i was not able to implement them like in real life like at school i was basically going to school and doing academics only but then it was only here at ala that i was able to actually practice everything like i knew how do you build habits i knew what is self-discipline i knew how to use different apps and tools to manage my time so it's only when i was given the opportunity to use those tools that's when i was able to build everything from scratch like build self-discipline motivation and build all that thing that i know now Mm. And also one other aspect I think that really helped me to build that relationship is my ability to know what I'm doing or my strong reason why I'm doing everything here. Like ever since I came here on campus, like I literally took two hours, sit down, figure out what I want to do here. Like why, why did I choose to leave Mauritius and come to South Africa and study basically the same thing? So. Yeah, having that very strong why is or a burning yes that says no to other things that really helped me to build that relationship with time. Mm -hmm. You talk you talk about habit building. Um, can you just yeah. kindly unpack like what are some of the key habits that you were intentional or deliberate about developing that allowed you to to be as productive as you are? So um, I think one biggest habit here, like what people know me for on campus is being able to sleep 
very like a very consistent time frame. I sleep every single day from the first day I came on couple, which is two years ago, at 10 p.m. And then I wake up every single day at 5 a.m. I think that was the biggest habit that I was able to internalize now. And even now, whenever I reach around 10, 9.30 p.m.-ish, I start to get tired. And regardless of the time I sleep or regardless of what's happening on that day, I'll always wake up at 5 a.m. I think that was a very big habit I was able to internalize in my own lifestyle. And I think the reason why I was able to do that by using a very powerful concept, which is using your environment to your advantage. When I came here, so Mauritius is normally two hours ahead of South Africa. So when I came here, my sleeping pattern was switching a bit, was still not used to South African time. So I was waking up naturally at 5 a.m. And I, I said to myself, okay, that's a very good habit that most people, most successful people try to build. And I was able to build it like very easily. And I don't, I literally wake up at that time with the flight lags and everything. Mm. So I said, okay, let me just practice it and keep it consistent and see how it goes for next week. Did it for one week, went well. I'm waking up at 5 a.m. naturally, even before my alarm. Mm. Went it for one month, one term, years, two years. And now it's very, very consistent. Like every time, regardless of what I'm doing, I wake up at 5 a.m. and I sleep at 10 p.m. Now, one of the one of the cool things that I really found about your methods is that there is really no BS in terms of like the math and breaking it down for people to show them about the amount of time they have. Um, however, what I found most impact, impactful is that you've got this notion of time boxing. Talk to me more about time boxing. What does it mean to time box? And why do you think it's important for young people to grasp what it is to time box? Okay, so um, yeah, definitely time boxing is one of those very popular concepts on time management out there. It's how I can easily define it. It's the ability to allocate time based on different projects you're working on. For example, if you're working on academics, then time boxing comes in. If I say I'm going to work for two hours for math, for example, that's kind of how time boxing works, basically allocating time, whatever you're working on in your schedule. But then Knowing that concept, when I came here, I was literally trying to get the most out of this concept. Okay, it's something cool, but then what's next? What can I do to increase it to its maximum efficiency and effectiveness? Mm. So that's where I came up with the ability to first know how much time one activity is going to take me, like through the hour and to the minute. And the second one is to really understand how much capacity I have in a week, in a month, or even in a year in terms of hours and everything. Like, I think at this point, I was able to learn how to use time boxing by literally calculating how much time one task is going to take me, giving, maybe it might be revision for math, revision for a test, or working on a different business plan, something like this. Like, Yeah, time boxing, just being able to allocate time very effectively. Yeah. And I guess when you do this, when you're able to have that clarity in your schedule, in your week, in your month, it really helps you to do what you need to do like every single day. You have your strong reason why. Now you know what you're going to work on. It's just a matter of you showing up and doing everything. But then I think one major thing that most people don't know about time management, which is efficiency or everything around efficiency, which is self-discipline, motivation, willpower, energy level. I think time boxing is just a tool that you use. But then what's the point of using a tool if you cannot stick to it? I think that's another big concept that people really can improve a lot. If you can be your self-discipline, motivation, and generate your willpower, your ability to resist temptation and short-term distractions will really allow you to stick to those tools and use them at their maximum capacity. Mm -hmm. you, talk, you talk a lot about self-discipline. Um, to a lot of people, this is probably a, one of the things they grapple a lot with. Is it something you were born with? Is it something you taught yourself? And if it's something that you taught yourself, how, how did you go about it? How did you go about being as disciplined as you are? Um, interesting question. Like, I don't, I really don't think there's a straight answer to it. Some people they do they do say they are born with self discipline, but I think in my own experience, I learned everything. I was never that very disciplined person before. 
I always tried to improve. So I think when it comes to building self-discipline, the first by far most important component is having your strong why, the reason why you're doing all of the things that you're doing, and a strong reason why you want to stick to a very, very rigid schedule. That's the first component. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, I would say the habit building, kind of the thing that we talked about previously, being able to build that habit loop that's consistent, that's automatic, and every time you just show up, that thing just kicks in. You just do it every time, day in, day out, you just do that habit. That's the second component. But I think the last one would be um, being able to... Hmm, control your ma mindset. So um, there's a philosophy I follow by, which is called Stoicism, which is, can be summarized very simply by the art of controlling what you can control and accepting uncontrollable stuff. For example, here, since when Corona, like COVID-19 situations, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think a really good example of Stoicism will be controlling my action, my mind, and what I can do in a day. And accepting the fact that there's an uncontrollable event happening outside, which is a virus trying to mess up everything in my life. And if I can really understand that concept of not focusing on something I can control, which is a virus outside of the world, and only focusing on what I can do now in the moment and just doing that thing, I think that's one very big component of self-discipline. If you can do that effectively, you're going to reduce your stress level, increase your energy level, and all those things. I think stress, Management is a big part of stoicism. Like if you can focus on things that you can control, actions, your mind, and this mindset, mm. you basically remove stress from your life. Mm. Mm. You, you, you spoke about um, the ability to understand, like in your theory, about the understand, to understand what you can control and that which you can't control. Um, what would you say are some, uh, like, how do you, how do you go about building, setting a, a daily schedule, but allowing for, for, for things to happen, like planning to, to adapt? How do you adapt to, to that? Okay. Yeah. I think that's a good concept I was able to internalize, especially at this moment in time. So um, one, in summary, what I can say, how you can effectively do that, like control external factors that just mess up with your schedule in a day is just by using what I term flexible times. In your schedule, you can have in a day. So if you say you wake up at 5 a.m. and you sleep at 10 p.m. maybe, then on average, you will have 17 hours in a day of you being awake. So then in that 17 hours, if you say you eat for two hours, you take a shower for two hours again, there's around 13 hours that you can use. So in the 13 hours, that's 100% under your control where you can really do whatever you want. I think it's a very good idea to have a flexible time, a time that's very malleable that you can easily replace with something that just shows up in the day. And I think if you just do that for a week, you literally calculate how much time you have in a week, seeing how much free time or flexible time you have, and using those as a tool for you to really counter that external factor that comes in. Definitely, you cannot plan for everything. You can at best estimate certain things. But then there's always that one thing, that's one meeting, that's one assignment, that's one other thing that just shows up in your schedule and then yeah. that's everything up. So I think just having this flexible time that you can very easily manipulate, like just a matter of moving, maybe something on Monday, moving it to Tuesday, moving it to Wednesday. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, you create space in your schedule. You create literally time that you can work on those uncertain and external factors. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, really creating flexible time in your schedule. Mm -hmm. Talking about factors, um, to anybody who might be listening and might be struggling to have a schedule that is up to your level or trying to have a schedule for, their, for themselves, um, what do you think are some of the action steps that people should take when adapting to the schedule? What are some of the external and internal factors that they should consider when making such a decision? Okay. So I think when it comes to scheduling, definitely the first step will be, can you actually stick to a very rigid schedule? Do you have a good self-discipline? Do you have motivation? Do you have enough energy to last for the whole day? I think that's the first thing that you need to ask yourself. Like, can you actually maintain that part, the self-discipline aspect? And when it comes to actually scheduling, I would say really using different tools, maybe 
you might use Google Calendar, you might use different apps like Todoist, Notion, and all those that can help you to really manage everything that you're working on. And hmm. so, yeah, I think when it comes to building that thing from scratch, literally start small. Start to really identify in what aspects hmm. your work is going to look like. Hmm. Like, for example, for me, I'm a student. Definitely, there's going to be one aspect, which is going to school, doing my homeworks, everything related to class. That's one aspect of my life. Hmm. And then here, as you mentioned in my intro, like I was the CEO, CEO of the Bezos Scholars Student Enterprise. That's another thing I'm working on. Then CEO of the African Leadership Consulting Group. That's the third thing. And then a few other activities I'm working on. So trying to categorize how your time is going to be spent into different aspects. So once you know that, let's say you have five different aspects that you're working on in your specific moment in time, then it's easy for you to understand how much time can I allocate? Depending on how important that thing is, prioritization, how much time do I want to allocate in a week to work on that thing? Do I want to allocate 20 hours for academics or seven hours to my personal business or such things? Definitely those numbers are going to change every week. But I think the first is really just 25. What aspects are my life separated into? Academics, business, personal development, all those things. Once you know that, it's a matter of how much time you want to allocate for those things. Mm, 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 mm. In, in the many articles that you've written for, for the Leaders Journal, you've spoken about your ability to sit down and imagine yourself doing the work. Can you actually just unpack that? What, what do you mean when you say, do you like sit down and meditate <laughs> for how your day is going to look like? Walk me through how that looks like and how people can implement it. Okay. So um, I guess that concept we're talking about is mainly kind of visualization, like how do you actually start from zero and you have a very, very big goal, maybe writing four articles in a week. Like how do you actually quantify and allocate task and time for you to write this amount of article in a week? So um, how I actually go about this using basic visualization. So I try to put myself in my, like in my own shoes, but then for tomorrow, when I'm going to actually sit down and do that task. Trying to imagine, okay, what's the first step? What's the second one and what's the third one? Trying to really build from where I am now, from initial position to that goal. It's just a matter of figuring out the process in between. So um, I really try to put myself in my, like my own shoes when I'm going to do task one, task two, task three. And I think that concept is really going to come with a lot of practice. How do you write articles? Do you do a first draft? Do you get feedback? Do you have a final draft? Such thing, like what kind of system are you using for you to start from initial position and reach your final goal? What is the system between that? Once you know that system is just a matter of how much time you want to spend on that thing. So yeah, visualization really comes with a lot of practice and being able to put yourself in your own shoes how do I start from initial position and reach that goal? That's how basically I plan every single thing I do at school and even in my life. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that, Takshil. Great. Um, I, I think you, you've been known um, that you work approximately on average a week, 101 hours. When I calculated that, that is approximately 14.5 hours a day of you behind your laptop or working. Um, by far making you the most productive person I've met. I think my question and what would people be wondering is how are you able to execute at such a high level consistently? Furthermore, what do you implement in your day to day to in your day to day schedule that allows you to execute at such a level consistently? Yeah. So um, I would say the first thing will be willpower and knowing that this thing is a limit is a finite resource. You don't have unlimited willpower in a day. And knowing that, you can, it's just a matter of how wisely you can use that limited resource that you have. So um, I think for me, a very big aspect of me working for such amount of time every single day, week in, week out, month in, month out, is just knowing how I can allocate my willpower. That limited, that finite resource that allows me to resist change, um, temptation, short-term distraction, and short-term gratification. Like really understanding how willpower works 
And I think this willpower is a very big concept in self-discipline. And it also affects how your energy level is going to be in a day. And definitely there's a big difference between high motivation and high willpower. Like I think this, they are both very related, but I don't think they are separate in itself. I think you might have high motivation or high energy level, but then low willpower, low ability to start something or raise it that short term short term temptation. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of how you can balance those. And for me, what I do personally to really increase all of those two metrics is really focusing on my sleep, diet, health, and all those other aspects, all those things that I put in my mouth, what kind of fuel I'm using in the day, how much time do I want to spend, and how do I also manage stress? I think those are very big component of you really sticking to a schedule and working for a long amount of hours. Just to sidetrack, you spoke about managing stress in your answer. Um, having been CEO of the Bezos Scholars Foundation and COO, working with you at the African Leadership Academy, African Leadership Consulting Group. How, you, how, are you, how do you deal with stress? How are you able to detox the busyness of the day at the end of the day? Yeah, so um, I think stress management is a very big thing, especially for us students, since like, stress is a very common thing for us. I think the reason why most of us students, we get stressed is because we have only one path we're following to get to our goal. Definitely one of my big goals is to start my own company. And to do that, I have a specific path I want to follow. And if I think about it, like if I just focus on my academics saying, if I do well for school, I get good grades, I go to a good university, then I might get, good, I might get a good internship, and then, then I can start my own business, which is my goal. Mm. So um, this is only one path for me to reach that goal. But then for me to really control that stress and control that uncertainty, I don't want to have one path. I want to have different paths that will allow me to reach that goal effectively. If one thing is not going to work, then I have four other things that's going to work. That's what I think will really help me or anyone else to manage stress. Like if you have a goal, when that thing becomes uncertain, that's when you get stressed. That's when you start to worry. That's when you start to self-doubt. And all those social expectations and social pressures really start to drill in your mind. Mm -hmm. And I really think stress is a mindset. It's just a matter of how you're looking at things and focusing again on what you can control and not those external things that are uncontrollable. So um, it's a matter of how you can make your goal certain, mm -hmm. how you can have different paths that makes you reach that goal. Mm. If you're working at, on school, that's great. If you're doing well, that's very great. But then what other path can you find to reach that goal? Mm. What's the next thing that you can start to maybe build yourself or build your skill to start your own company? Mm. For me, definitely school is one thing. But then doing being the CEO of this organization, being the CEO of this other organization is kind of building my skills at the same time. Building mm. that connection, building the skill, self-motivation, discipline, all of those little things that I think are very important to reach that goal. Mm. Even let's say if I fail at my academics, I don't go for university, still, I was able to build that connection, build mm. that skill set, build that mind mindset for me to push forward with adversity. Mm. And even if I don't go for university, having those things, those soft skills in me will allow me to reach that goal and mm. having that next part mm. that I mentioned. Mm. Yeah. What I, what I really love about your answer is that you speak about a lot focusing on what you can control, right? As earthlings, we go through seasons and a lot of times, I'm guessing you had a lot of times with um, the Bezos Foundation putting you the other in ALCG being demanding and how you were able to navigate that, um, which I think is quite fruitful and that people would use. And most importantly, what I'm thinking is that the season that we're in now, right? with now everyone being on lockdown. Um, to yeah. anyone who might be looking at this episode and really trying to figure out how do I maximize my time now mm -hmm. in this lockdown? I'm home, I'm not in an ideal space. I've got a, you know, a lot of distractions. There's TV, there's home chores. What, what would be some of the things that you would recommend people should focus on that you think that they can control that will help them maximize their time in the specific season? Fourth answer, just do everything online. 
Like I really think love, yeah. <laughs> I think online is the answer at this point. Yeah. Social distancing. There's no more physical meeting. There's mm. no more school work happening. There's no more mm. social interaction. Mm. So I think online is the way to go now. Even me, kind of the side project I'm working on now. How can I bring impact for other people by doing something online? Mm. Like I really think like, and also I'm seeing other people, other creators, innovators, and entrepreneurs around the world. Mm. They're really switching into online. And I think now, if you really cannot do that transition effectively, you might really lose that competition that you're fighting for. Mm. I'm seeing a lot of companies that are failing because they are not able to accommodate to online platforms like basic delivery systems. Mm. If, there was, if there's no ways in which they can do their thing online, mm. they're going to fail very easily. Mm. So um, I really think now is the best time for you to switch online. And mm. especially for us youth, we are more kind of engaged into that whole online learning, mm. online business and all those things and it's easier for us to really transition i think it's just a matter of you getting a laptop getting good wi-fi and then doing what you want maybe creating content creating impact anything that you really skilled at just putting that content online and impacting other people life mm. so so then when it comes to actually doing the work it's a good thing that you know what you want to do you have the skill to do everything but then when it comes to doing the work i really think it's a matter of how you can still build some structures around in your life. Definitely you're at home. You have a lot of distractions. You have your phone. Maybe you have your pets or your mm. family that is coming to the room, such things. Then it's a matter of you finding your inner peace and really your environment for you to work. Okay. Mm. Really so, um, yeah, when it comes to online learning and online, doing everything online, it's a matter of how you can build a structure in your life. Definitely there's those different distractions. Maybe your pets at home, your friends sending you texts to want to do a Zoom call, or maybe even your family. But then it's about finding your own personal environment, like your, a place where you can really focus and do deep work. Mm-hmm. Like I really think a matter for you, like one the very big aspect for you to work effectively is finding the right spots, the right environment that's going to put in that flow state or mental state that will allow you to work at your highest efficiency level. Mm-hmm. So um, I think few keys few things that I've learned on how to build that environment. First of all, try to remove all distraction. This can be maybe even your phone or your laptop or Facebook or any social media. Literally, you can just block all those websites very easily using different apps that's out there. Mm. Or just understanding why. Like, why are you getting distracted because of those things? Mm. If you have a strong reason to say, yes, I'm going to work on those things, Mm. then you should have a strong no to say, no, I'm not going to work to focus on those distractions. Mm. So um, it's really a matter of how you can balance deep work and distractions. Mm. For me, what I personally do, I try to allocate specific time where people know I'm actually working at this time. So please don't distract me or don't interrupt that flow. Once you get into that flow state or that ability to work at high efficiency, Mm. it's a matter of how you can maintain that state, directed focus and keep on creating as much content as you can. So I think that's a big concept for you to reduce destruction. And one of the concepts of creating your environment is how you can use social pressure to your advantage. I think that's something I use really a lot this year. Like definitely here on campus, like we have libraries. And one of the reasons why I always try to work in the libraries in front of other people is so that I can motivate myself. Like if someone is going to see me watching a movie, being on Facebook or Instagram on my laptop, they will literally stop me and say, what are you doing? Are you not supposed to work? So um, using that social pressure or social expectation of you being in a productive space to work will help you a lot. And maybe at home, how you can do that, you can literally go to your parents and say, I'm going to work for the next four hours. If you see me being distracted, just stop me. Or just remind me why I'm doing all of those. Why am I sitting for the next four hours in this chair and working on those stuff? I have the specific goal. And I don't want any distractions. So um, that's a new way how you can use social pressures to your own advantage and create that perfect environment for you to work. Thank you so much. What I love about your, your answer is that you, you speak about what I'm aware of is, is becoming aware of your blind spots that I will, and, and finding accountability systems at home 
that enable you to reach your goals, right? You, you get the example about the mothers or parents reaching out to parents and asking them to really help us, uh, keep keeping us accountable to do our work. Um, having spent time around you, briefly talk to me about your eating pattern. I know you don't eat your breakfast, however you eat lunch and dinner, even though your plates, when I've looked at them, you've got a lot of greens on it. Um, and you also drink a whole uh, lot of water. Talk to me more about, briefly, just talk to me about the link between your diet and how you've integrated into your working schedule. So um, I think my diet is a very, very big part of me being self-disciplined, managing my energy and being able to do deep work. So um, kind of what kind of the diet I do, I do the keto diet, which is basically not eating any sugars, carbohydrates, all those processed starches that's really removed from my diet. I only meat proteins and fats. That's all the things that I eat. So like normally when I eat, when you see me eating for lunch, for example, I have either a piece of meat, a lot of vegetables and water. That's basically my diet. At this point, I learned that this keto diet puts you in a state of ketosis, which allows you to use fat and all those things and put it in the best in a better fuel. Like there's a fuel called ketones. That's the basic of the keto diet for you to get that fuel. And normally they did some studies on how efficient and effectively your body can use that fuel compared to glucose. And they saw that ketones is the preferred fuel for your brain. And I really think that me being doing the keto diet for the past three years has really impacted how I think my mental clarity and all my mental capacity overall. Like I really think that following this specific diet, only eating fats, proteins, and removing all type of sugars, all type of carbohydrates, putting a lot of vegetables, all those nutritious foods into my diet really allow me to gain a lot of energy, mental clarity, and focus as well. Like kind of to complement everything, what I do as well, kind of a lifestyle for me, I do fasting for at least 18 hours in a day. So I stay. For 18 hours on my whole day in 24 hours without eating food at all. And then the other six hours, that's kind of my eating window. So between lunch and dinner, I have kind of a six hour window for me to eat. At this window, I can eat how much I want. So by doing this in the morning, if say I wake up at 5 a.m., from 5 till lunchtime, which is around 12, I have literally seven hours for me to do whatever I want. Another time, my mind is very, very sharp. Like, it's insane how productive I can be in those seven hours compared to after lunch when I eat, when I get bloated, when I have a lot of food going on in my system, I get tired. Like I really try to use those specific tools, those tips. Like I know at between 5 p.m. to 12 p.m. to 12 p.m. i the most productive ever. Like I don't have anything in my system. It's just me and my brain and the energy I have. Now it's just focus time. But then when I start to eat, my energy levels start to drop a bit. But then using some motivation and some willpower, I'm able to bring that energy back up again till I eat my last meal of the day, which is dinner. So I really think first, putting the right food in your mouth and understanding when you want to eat so that you can block or liberate as much time as you can in your day really, really impact how much I can do, produce and stay consistent to my schedule every single day. Hmm. Thank you so much, Takshir. Um, I, I generally believe that the principles that you've shared in this episode will be impactful in people's lives given the current season that we're going through. I mean, I found myself earlier on this week thinking around how do I bulletproof myself, you know, through, through such times? How do I just get, 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 get the hang of this thing of time management and as you said earlier in the interview, thinking around how, how do I plan um, and, and consider the fact that things might happen along the day, flexible times. Um, thank you so much. On that note, what would you say is your message to the world? Yeah, I would really say just take ownership of your own actions and that will lead to you being more or much better at time management. I really think time management is about controlling your own actions first and then you can control your time. So yeah, really take ownership of your own actions and then you can control your time.
that's my question. Thank you so much, Sakshi. How, how can our listeners and our viewers stay in touch with you or the work that you're doing? Yes, definitely. You can reach out for me through emails, LinkedIn, or Facebook, and even Instagram. Um, yeah, like those are the major platforms I use every single day. And definitely, I'm trying to post more articles, posting more content on LinkedIn. To me, that would be the best place for you to reach me out and seeing what are the things I'm doing on a professional level. And if you just want to reach out to me personal level, Facebook or Instagram are the best way to, to do that. All right, there you have it from Takshil Alec himself. Guys, go read and look what he's about on his social media pages. His articles are recently, well, in the coming weeks, will be featured on the Leaders Journal. You will have access to all of some of the key principles where you will got the time to really unpack some of the key principles that he shared with us. Once again, here at the Leaders Podcast, we believe that as more and more young people conscious of the unique flow as they discover their hidden purpose they essentially add value to society in the only way they can please follow us on our instagram apple podcast spotify at the leaders podcast if you believe that you enjoyed this episode please like comment share with any three other people who you believe will find this episode valuable until next time thank you